Uh, who's your guest today? Talk um, about guest. I have Paul Passino. Oh, he is a staff sergeant in the New York, uh, excuse me, in the United States National Guard. Uh -huh. And he's a past Rensselaer commander of the American Legion. I'm very honored to have him with us today. Okay, and you're going to talk about war stories today, yes, right? Yes, yes. So do you have some juicy stories you want to learn about that you're going to ask some questions you're going to ask him? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm so thankful. To, pe to the veterans, to people who've literally, you know, fought for our freedom. It, it was, you know, we got our freedom through blood, sweat, and tears. I know it sounds cliche, but because of these U.S. veterans, they really have paved the way for a lot of the things that we have now. And we take things that they, like the freedoms that they've given us, we take it for granted. We really do. And welcome back. You're watching Variety with John and Anna. I'm Anna, and today I have with me Paul Passano. He is a military veteran. He has so many notches under his belt, and thank you for coming to the show. I'm so honored to have you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Great. So I just want to thank you, Paul, like for what you and many other U.S. soldiers have done for this country and will continue to do. Because of you guys, like we have countless freedoms and civil liberties, like the freedom to vote, the, the freedom to go um, to school, get an education, the freedom to express ourselves however necessary, however we feel. Um, suitable like you guys have done so much you guys gave us like the freedom to even do the show the freedom for people to take their kids to the ice cream parlor and then to the park like we take a lot of these things for granted we don't realize like where these freedoms stem from and they came from you guys thank you oh it's not just me and those that are currently saving or serving um, it's also like the former mayor who has also served in the Navy um, you know it's those before us mm -hmm. that help give us what we have. Before, now, and even after us, mm. you guys. And it's not just the soldiers, it's your, you know, Marines, sailors. Mm. Uh, U.S. officials. Uh, the, 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 the airmen and the, uh, the Coast Guard members, mm -hmm. you know, they're... It's they're a collective. We, we, we served over there in Iraq. The base that I was assigned to, we had every one of them there. Mm -hmm. You know, they're from the five branches. How does it feel to be a veteran? Uh, no different than it is anybody else. It's mm -hmm. just that if being a veteran, it states that um, some of us have done what others, for whatever reason, Could can't or won't or... Mm -hmm. So I remember like I called you a hero before and you said, I'm not a hero. I, no, I don't look at myself as that. Mm -hmm. I, I look at myself as a service member mm -hmm. and, a, and, and a soldier, just an average soldier. You feel like it's, you're doing your duty. It's, yeah, I mean, this country is the greatest country in the world and yes. it's my way to give something back to them. Right. I think that's amazing. Um, so how, like how old were you when you realized you wanted to be a part of the military? Actually, I enlisted at the age of 17. Wow. So you knew. Yeah. And then I wanted to get off the farm for a little while. And, okay. Oh, you know, where did you grow the, up at? Actually, I grew up out over in Rensselaer County. Okay. Uh, outside of Troy. Wow. So you grew up in Rensselaer County and then you were a commander for, for the, the American, American Legion. Legion. Yes. In Rensselaer County. Yes. Wow. Are you still... A oh, part of the American oh, Legion? Uh, oh, very, very active with, wow. the, with the American Legion. I mean, there's post and county and uh, district uh, things that I do. So what else do you do? I know you're a man of many things. So you're a veteran. What else? Well, I'm also still currently in the New York Army National Guard. Mm -hmm. um, with that, uh, been between... All my military service, it's been 25 years now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's I know, awesome. It, I mean, it, it's, it's funny because I've had friends of mine that known me for a long time. And mm -hmm. says, are you retired yet from the military? Still kicking, still going. No, I, and, and I've been asked, well, when are you going to retire? I said, well, I can't have, I don't have an exact date. What right. I do say is my military career is closer to the sunset than it is to sunrise now. Well, okay, <laughs> so meaning it's almost approaching the it's end. It's getting there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've traveled to 
all the continents of the world except for one. Wow. Which one didn't you go to? I haven't made it to Australia. Okay. Wow. Wow. So you're a well-traveled person. Oh, very much so. So <laughs> where have you served? Like, where um, you were in combat, of course. Yes. Where I, were you in combat? And um, I was assigned to uh, FOB Danger to Kurd Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I was based out of. And we, I've traveled to many different parts of the world, even with the military. Uh, Ireland, Scotland, Spain, uh, wow. Italy, France, Germany. Wow. So you've seen uh, it all. I haven't seen it all. I've seen a lot. A lot. And you speak a lot of languages, don't you? I'm not as fluent as I used to be, but okay. yeah, I do speak, I, 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 still, I still speak parts of four different languages. That's great. Technically fine if, five if you want to count profanity. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, a thing about Paul, like um, we met in... Um, he patrols the Greyhound bus terminal where I work, and we met, and we'll, we'll be talking, and you saying that made me think of something. Um, well, he's always joking around. Like, I've never heard, like, in one sitting, as many jokes as I heard, like, talking to you. <laughs> you have a good personality, and that's great, because, you know, being in war, being in the military, it can, it can stiffen you, you know what oh, I mean? It, it does, it, it, and, and you actually do become emotionless and you know, seem like you're, you're distant, and sometimes you are. I mean, it's, and that comes with uh, some of the issues right. with the combat veterans. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about, like, some war stories? Like, what have you, some of the things that these, you've experienced? Actually, so, uh, you know, I, I, I won't call them war stories, mm -hmm. but some of the, you know, the, the, one of the most fulfilling things in my life has actually took place in Iraq when, mm -hmm. The, you know, the Iraqi nationals that I was dealing with on a daily basis, you know, greatly appreciated us being there. Wow. So it's not like it's all, I mean, don't get me wrong, we had bad days, we had good days. Right. And, and so and, you and, helped and, them. Oh, and, and they appreciate that. And one of the examples that I like to use is that there is currently more residents or citizens of, in Iraq that have public services and public utilities than they did under Saddam's regime. So it's because of you guys? It's not, yeah, it, it, it's the, the military that's mm -hmm. helped them put that together. You guys have done so much. What would you say the worst thing that you've seen or experienced while in the military? What's the worst experience? Manhattan, 9-11. Can you tell us about that? Uh, I'll never forget, I did, you know, I got to, I worked that night because I was working the overnight shift. Mm -hmm. The phone rang, got a report into the armory. Um, we got our warning orders, went down, and I was working security in the zone mm -hmm. in Manhattan. And um, that, that was a very difficult day because it didn't seem like New York, you know. It, and you it's were right in the middle of it, right? Oh, yeah. After everything. Yeah. So you experienced all the soot? It, yeah. It, I, it, the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that still comes to my mind from that is the, the odor of, uh, it's, it was like a burnt rubber or burnt plastic. Mm. And the skies were gray. Mm. It didn't seem like it was New York. Wow. Wow. The is that your most memorable experience as well? Mom? No, there's a lot of memorable experiences, mm -hmm. and, and most of them are, are great experiences right. to where I've made a lot of great friends. And you'd never take anything back? No. No regrets? None. Nothing you do differently? No, That's because it, the good and bad, and I feel that the good and bad in your life make you who you are. Right. We need adversities. We need good. We need bad. We need hurt. We need pain. Well, pain, it, it, you know, is the body's, the weakness leaving the body. Mm. Okay, interesting. <laughs> so, we all know in war, there's devastation, there's death. There can be. Um, in our talks before, you've mentioned how you've, you've seen loved ones and friends die. Have people ever, like, actually died right in front of you, like? Yeah. Um, and that's... Uh, and part of, part of that is, you know, is 
part of that it goes in line with the PTSD issues mm -hmm. and the thing is with PTSD each individual has it differently and different severities right. and PTSD has so many different symptoms to it and, and levels and levels but the symptom the, the, the variety of symptoms that that come with PTSD it could be self-destructive behavior by that Fast. individual mm -hmm. um, to where it could be drug or alcohol abuse mm -hmm legal or illegal mm -hmm. um, to risk taking that you normally wouldn't do. Would you say that your or PTSD if, is or severe? I wouldn't say it's severe. Mm -hmm. I mean people ha there are people out there that have it worse than I do. Mm -hmm. um, to where another symptom of PTSD the individual could actually be depression like symptoms. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, and, and each one of us deals with it differently. Right. I remember you saying that you actually, you don't get violent. The extent of it is you get, you, you'll shut get down. get loud or shut down. Or you'll yell. And I think that's great, like, because some people get violent and... Some people do, and some people actually get into to where they're actually having oh, the flashback issues. To where they're Yeah, they're, they're calling out, you know, fire commands or... You know, they're, they're looking for people that they were there with. I think that's great. Like, um, when we've talked before, like, you, you embrace PTSD. Like, you, it's a part of who you are. And I think that's beautiful that you embrace it. Have you ever taught, like, classes on it? Like I, mm, I taught classes, no. I've done a lot of my own research because I'm a full-time college student mm -hmm. at Brian Stratton in Albany. Congrats. In my third semester. What are you going for? Business major. Nice, nice. Now, we'll see whether or not it pays off. <laughs> okay. Well, it'll definitely pay off. It'll get you a degree. Uh, it, well, the education is something they can never take away right. from Right. Knowledge is power. And there's more than just the formal education aspect of it. I mean, there's a lot of the military, you know, education that I, I've gotten there where I could never get anyplace else. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've learned so much from the military, you know, from... Life as training. It, as 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 a as a leader, and as a subordinate, mm -hmm. and it's it, it's something that they can never take away from me. Right. I mean, right. it's been a lot. I've, I've had a I've had a good life. I've there's been some things in my life that have been tough, but I I don't regret my life at all. What's your standpoint on war? Oh, I hate war. Mm -hmm. Hate it. But however, it's necessary. Sometimes it is necessary. Right. What kind of advice would you give to newbies or, you know, who are just going, about to go into the military or rookies who just started? Okay, uh, the new recruits, um, to, my advice would be to them is embrace your training sometimes, it, it, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. I hear it's, it's not tough. supposed to be. Yeah, not supposed to be. And the, the, uh, when, when you graduate from basic and you graduate from your schooling, um, trust your training because the military trains you. To be tough. Well, that and it trains you to be part of a team. Teamwork is essential. Right. You know, you, some things you just can't do by yourself, but yeah. as a collectively, you're strong. There, there's not much that you can't do. Mm -hmm. I bet it helps a lot with endurance too, right? The endurance factor is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can remember in basic training to where we were running five to seven miles a day every day and wow. we were up at 3.30 in the morning because I went to basic in Alabama. Wow. How did you do on your uh, PT tests? Good? I, I usually do okay. I mean, it, you know, some days are tougher than others. <laughs> so can you just tell us again all your titles? Just so everyone can be aware uh, of everything. Okay, um, I'm currently a Staff Sergeant with the 42nd mm -hmm. Infantry Division, Higher Headquarters Company, Step Special Troops Battalion. Staff Sergeant! Um, <laughs> pa past County Commander for the American Legion of Rensselaer County. Um, I'm also uh, the Post County Baseball Chairman mm -hmm. for the American Legion. I am the Vice Chairman for the District the third district of the American Legion. 
Um, I'm also, a, a, as a hobby, I, I officiate sports on the field. Mm -hmm. Wow. You do a lot. I, I try to keep myself busy. Nice. So what's next for you? Because you're still active. Um, I've been told that my name has been placed on a, on a deployment list. Okay. Oh, my God. That's scary. I was about to be like, okay, but no, that's scary. No, well, I mean, I'd have to say yes to that just for the simple fact to be, if you're not scared, right. then you lose your edge. Right. Exactly. I mean, being nervous is, you know. Because if you're too confident, you're laid back, you're not on your toes. Well, no, you can be confident because I'm very confident in my abilities. But not, yeah, everyone should be confident and proud of their abilities, but not too, not too relaxed, not too confident, not You, don't, you want to take it for granted. You right. don't want to take your abilities for granted. Right. You always have to, you, you always need that edge. So, Paul, is there anything that you'd like to say to the people out there? Anything at all? Well, to the, my fellow service members, looking forward to you coming home and being with your family, friends, and loved ones. And to the family members of those service members, uh, bear with them. You know, may God look upon you pre, during, and post deployments. Uh, and think about the military service to those young men and women. It, it's not a way to get rich, but it is a very fulfilling aspect of life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um, just one more question. What do you feel like our, like our duty is as an American? Ah, God, uh, there, there's so many things. And I would have to say, the duties of an American is to take individual responsibility. Accountability. The, don't, don't say, well, it's my environment. Right. It was, you know, no, because you can... You can change it. You, you can change your environment. Nurture versus nature. And I like to use the example of Colin Powell. There's a man that, you know, come out of Jamaica, Queens, mm -hmm. to become one of the, the top leaders of, of the right. free world. Right. You can change your situation. No matter where you came from, no matter what happens, you can always be successful no matter what. If you want that. If you want that. We can do anything that we want to do as long as we try. And I just want to say thank you so much for your service to our country. You inspire me. You and many other U.S. soldiers are so brave, and you guys are heroes, and you will go down in history, as you already know, I'm sure. And, you know, we tend to reflect on veterans on days such as Flag Day or the Fourth of July or Veterans Day, Memorial Day, but we really should honor and pay homage to the U.S. veterans and soldiers all year round. You guys have done so much for us. Um, and you know, just like we'll never forget 9-11, we shall never and should never forget the American, the United States veterans and all they have done for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. My pleasure.